G'day legends, welcome back to another episode. Thanks for joining us as always. We hope you're living free and as you can see, young nomads, well, we're at it again, exploring, adventuring and touring. And it's that time of year where we head off to set and embark to mighty Yalatar to chase the silver elusive ghost Mulloway. The annual migration and trip that we aspire and look forward to as a family and as a best crew of mates each and every year. This year, unfortunately, we don't have all our usual suspects. A few lads came up a week early, but on this adventure, we've got myself, my brother, Jags, Foss, my old man. We've got David Washington, who's on his first trip with his Polaris quad bike. So looking forward to sharing this experience with him for the first time. And we've got the legend himself, Gareth, who's already been here for a week, has got another week to go. I think he's doing about 18 days straight. But this red gate, as you guys and girls would know if you've watched previous episodes when I've taken you to Yalatan to experience it with us, is a gate and an entry that we look forward to each and every year. So sit tight, we're going to uh, air down, get ready to hit onto the track, head on in, set up camp. But whatever you do, kick back, relax and enjoy this experience of Yalatar 2022. We were talking about it just last night when we slept in the car overnight just out from Nundru there. I reckon this is about our 11th or 12th consecutive year back to back. That's how much we look forward to coming on this trip each and every year. And we can't wait to share Yalatar 2022 with you this year. Let's get on the track. Let's get among it. Yo. Always good to get first timers here to be able to share our experience, knowledge of the area, fishing, camping, and seeing all the beautiful wonders that Yalatar has to offer. So looking forward to uh, sharing this experience with Washo for the first time. Let's go over and see if he's got a few words, what he's, what he's feeling and thinking of his first trip. Washo, first trip, Yalata, you pumped, mate? I'm excited. What are you thinking? How are you feeling? I can't wait to see the sand dunes. Absolutely, he's got the, the new, I just showed the new Polaris quad bike that you got, so. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't break down. She'll be right, mate. All right, anyway, let's get on track. Let's get among it, eh? Hey folks, welcome back to officially day one of fishing Yalatar. Yesterday we got in, just set up camp, took pretty much most of the day, took our time getting set up. Went down to Coomera just for a little bit of a late afternoon flick as you would have seen. I got the tail end of Gareth hooking onto that nice flatty. We ended up with two in the end, a couple of little salmon just on soft plastics. Cooked up the flatties fresh last night over the hot camp coals, was absolutely mint. Yumpty! Good flatty. Oh, How's that? 45? Yeah. 46? Something like that. Dinner. But today we've just pulled up to Tidji. We've pretty much got the hole to ourselves. It is a campsite that we're staying at. So we've got Washo. He's out wide on the outside of the gutter. Then mine on the inside. Got my 12 footer, 13 footer. We've got a running rig and just a big Paternoster sort of sand anchor style rig on the big rod. As you can see, it's pretty calm today, so it's a good day, very little wind. Good body of water through here. And then we got Jags over there. And then Gareth just down the end there by himself. He's been at it since about five o'clock this morning, wanted to get down here, get the hole, because the next two, three days are pretty much as good as it gets in terms of swell, wind and conditions. A little bit of weed around, but not too much, but Anyway, we're here, we're set up. As you can see, we've got the CF Moto. Got the awning. Dave's got the umbrella. And uh, first trip for Washo, so lots of learning, lots of fun to be had. And like I said to him before, it always takes your first couple of trips to find your feet, change your gear, and just get the setup just perfectly right to suit you. Because what's good for you, what's good for him might be different for me, so. So no fish today, unfortunately, but the lads are cooking up a good feed around the fire. Just legend. Yeah, look at all this. I'm Chicken. I cook better on this thing than I do on a normal cooker at home. Yeah. Every time it comes out perfect, doesn't it? They're all wondering how you're a bachelor. Oh no. Look at this master chef. 
Yeah, yeah. Sausages. Yeah. No need for a gas cooktop, mate. You just need a fire kit. Oh, no, leaf for that there. Got some chicken wrapped in bacon. What's that? A couple uh, of Scotch fillets. Rub steak. Good morning, good morning, good morning, legends. Welcome back to day two fishing. Well, it's our third day. Like I said, one day to set up, get base camp set up nicely. Fished all day yesterday, no big takers. Wind kicked up around about 2, 2.30, came in at a good 20 knots plus southeasterly. We fished right up to dusk, but no silver ghosts. Couple of salmon throughout the day, but as you can see, got up crack of dawn before sunrise. It's just coming up behind us over there. <coughs> Today's probably one of the pick of the days. Everything's lining up to be really good today. We've got some heat coming in, a late northerly. We've got some pressure variation. So what we've done this morning, we've come down here to secure the hole nice and early before sunrise. The legend Gareth did that yesterday. He fished all day with us. We didn't get down here till about 9.30. We fished right up till dusk. So today he's having a little bit of a lay in. Because one of the big things with this trip is really important is as much as you want to fish hard, you got to rest when the opportunities arise. Because, arrive, because the body does get sore. There's a lot of early starts, lay finishes, and hard yakka days. So today we're going to be pretty much fishing all day. Justin and I are skewering the hole this morning. Gareth the Legend's having a lay in. He'll come down here probably about 9.30, 10. And then we'll fish right up till about 1, 1 1.30ish. We'll go back up to camp, have a bit of a feed, have a sleep because tonight the wind's back right off. We're in for a warm and balmy night, it's forecast. So we're aiming to fish till the wee hours of tomorrow morning. So we'll head back up there, have a feed, have a bit of a sleep just to recharge. And then we'll get down here for the dusky session and uh, into the wee hours of the morning for the big tide. Cause we're on the back of the new moon. So the tides are quite large over the next few days. As you can see last night, the incoming, the big tides during the night came right up here to the back of the sand dune. So anyway, I'm gonna get some, uh, Rod's out, hopefully a tight line, bent rod or two, and a bust up. Have a look at that hole though behind us, legends. What a cracking start to the morning. Not a breath of air in sight. And uh, Mother Nature, well, she knows how to turn on. She knows best, absolutely. The legend's on. It shakes. 60, 70, 80 centimeters, baby. It's not that big, it's not taking drag. Hold it out. <laughs> That's like a chain. Keep your lights down. Yeah. All right, so it's the morning after the big fish from the night before. Foss is cooking up a storm. What do we got for breakfast, Foss? Ash brown, bacon, eggs, and mini cake. Woo! Gotta feed the lads. It's good, mate. So this is inside Foss's kitchen that he built off the side of the trailer. Got the TV up there. This might get used tonight because I think the forecast is rain, isn't it, mate? Yeah, is it today? Yeah. So we've got a couple of, what have we got? Some USBs? Yeah. A couple of movies tonight. <clears throat> so hard fish last night. We got that, uh, Gareth got that mully. About 82, 83 centimetres, I got that little one, Port Jackson shark, and yeah, just as the weed came in, it sort of, um, the surge got pretty, pretty hectic with that midnight, 1 a.m. high tide. So we fished till about the top of the tide and then cooled it once the weed started to settle in. So anyway, Legend's back down there at the moment. He secured the hole again at 5.30 this morning. 
We're going to cook up a feed, take him some food down there, some bacon and egg sandwich. We'll hit, hit hard again today because it's swung around, it's hot northerlies. I don't know if you can tell by all the flies around at the moment. Um, another beautiful day, but it's a lot warmer today, so a bit of a change in the temperature. And it's coming off the land, the wind now. So we'll see how we go. Hopefully that pushes out that little bit of weed that's still hanging around from the westerlies that we had the week before. We'll fish hard, and then there's supposed to be a change coming in later tonight where it's going to rain. So um, we'll probably have a bonfire. I'm going to cook up some German Kranskis for the lads. We're going to have a bit of a cook up and feed and a fire. And uh, we'll kick back, relax tonight, recharge, because we've got another good solid four days coming up, five days coming up, pending that change that's coming through. But it's pretty much in and out within about a 12 hour period. So we've got probably one of the best years of weathers, uh, of weather conditions lined up. So far, it's been unreal. The, uh, we can't fault the weather. 10 to 15 knots, pretty much easterly, south-easterly, or north-easterly. All right, we've come down here for a bit of a flick. As you can see, beautiful, northerly offshore, nice and hot. Gareth's in the hole, it's low tide. He hasn't had much action, so we thought we'd come down here for a flick. Look at this water, doesn't get much better. We've got Foss down there. See if we can get a flatty or a trevally or two. And then we're going to take it for a swim to a rock pool that we've got over there, nice hole. But first, let's see if we can get a flatty or two. There's a bit of a bommy over here, normally a reef bommy, but there's a lot of weed that's pushed in here that we normally fish. So we'll fish around the weed, see how we go. Well, Justin caught a little one. I lost my uh, lure on the reef over there. He's caught a little 30 tour on the board. Catch and release. Up he goes. Alright, so behind us is the little rock pool. We're gonna have a dip in. Uh, tide's not quite come in enough, it's not too full, but it's deep enough for us to have a little little walk in and a little swim in. What do you reckon, Jax? Yeah, no way, full of. Yeah. Anyway, put the towel down. And uh I think he's in there for a dip, eh? Well, it's definitely fresh. Just went under. I'll take have a little dive, but you can see here where the water just comes in over the right over the reef and the rocks there fills in here. It's probably up to my uh, nipple height at the moment. It is low tide, obviously. Anyway, we'll take you in for a dive so you can see how clear the water is before the big jags gets in here and stirs it up, eh? Here we go. In he goes. Straight in there, mate. Let me in. Ew. Woo. That's it. When he gets up to the jewel. <laughs> How is it, mate? That's good. Refreshing. Boss. Come on. In your undies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that Dad didn't bring any shorts. Conveniently, he didn't put in. He didn't bring any shorts or put shorts on. Hey, eh? always did fresh for him, though. Eh? There's a big school of salmon just in here. I'm gonna throw the plastic at him. I'm on my light gear. Let's see how we go. <laughs> We're on. Can you see him? All through you, can't you see him? Yeah, I can see that. Oh. oh no. Go, throw it, can't. Spewing. Got busted off at the shock leader. I had my drag tightened too tight, my fault. I cranked it a bit because obviously they're a good probably eight pound salmon on very super light gear. And I got probably a bit too excited, tighten my drag too much, not enough play, and uh, pulled through. But anyway, we'll tie in another shock leader, we'll get another plastic out there, 
that's the luck of the draw. Ah, hindsight's a beautiful thing after the fact. What could you have done differently not to have lost the fish? As I was walking down there, I seen him. I had my drag backed off, obviously, for smaller fish. Some salmon trout, maybe, that's been hitting my lure. Flatties. Seen that small school of salmon just moving through here. And as I was walking, I tightened my drag up a little bit, but I don't know if I find it too much. It did hit some weed, though, that added extra weight to the fish and it hit the weed and then went to jumpers that was sort of tangled up in some weed so I don't know if that sort of affected things a little bit as well as well as the drag being too tight but I think they've moved on now they're only a small school just come over to that little pocket where that water was washing in here up to the reef and then it's funneling back out through here but it's just another body of water there on the inside of that reef Lots of water flow through. You'd think there'd be plenty in here getting a feed. Water's pulling left to right pretty hard. Oh, well, we're on here. I've got bugger old GoPro. Yeah! Not much GoPro battery, guys. Sorry if I lose ya. Justin's lost his plastic. He's going back to get the bikes. New plastic. Put a new battery. Alright, sorry about that legends, we're back. New battery. Justin, we had a quad up there, he's brought my quad down. He needed to get a soft plastic. I got a new battery in the GoPro. I landed that uh, fish then, it was about a six pounder salmon. Nice little fight in the shallows here. But uh, we've had a few hits here, so there might be a few salmon just resting here in the, this pocket of body of water where it's a little bit deeper, sheltering behind the reef there. So we'll get back out there, get another flick and hopefully we can Catch this one beginning 10 for you legends. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Just in that deeper green water there. It's like a little... Yep, we're on. There they are. Ew. There's a school there, all right. They're just in there, mate. Using real light gear here, I've got a uh, Shimano Blue Romance, six foot seven power spin. Twenty pound braid on a Shimano C three thousand HG, nasty reel. Twenty pound braid to forty pound shock leader on a quarter ounce weighted jig head to a little five inch soft plastic Fisherman. Oh, good fun on like here. Should have gone out that way. Why don't you go out further? Yeah, that's where I was. Just walk out further, and then that way I'm in close. I'm in close and you're out past it. Good fun on like here, mate. Alright. I've tied him out now. About the same size as the one I just released before. We'll use this wave to get him out. Okay, folks, nice salmon. What are you doing with that? Oh, it's really deft, that one. Yeah, mate. That's 
way. Oi, hit my plastic. Hit my plastic. There we go. One of the plastic and all. Alright, I'll put that in my pocket for now. Get this fella back on. Water. There you go. Nice, healthy, far west coast salmon. Look at the backdrop. Doesn't get any better, eh? Catch and release. We've got plenty of bait, mate. Thanks for the fun. Thanks for the ride. Yeah, have a good life. Off he goes. Ride another day. Put on a couple extra pound. Woo! Back into that legend. Jumpy, jumpy! He's not that big, this one. Perfect mully bait size. Dex is on. What's he got this time? Salmon? He's not jumping. What's he got? Salmon? Oh yeah, the salmon. Chris Aston. Come on, boys. Yeah, the boys. Jigs and jags, jigs and jags. Fishing together, fishing together. Here we go. Hit the plastic. Ooh, ooh, yeah. See what? Three days flat out fishing does to you. Makes you go a little stir crazy. Jumpy, jumpy! He's not that big, this one. Perfect mully bait size.
There he is, catch and release. See you, mate. Sustainability is not always about catching and keeping everything that you catch. I'd rather release more, 95%, keep 5%. On this trip, we'll probably aim to keep one fish, one mully, 40, 45 pounds, somewhere in there would be good. If we get it, obviously, that's the key. Anyway, let's get back out there. Oh, woo! Backwash, baby. There he is, the man of the hour, Jiggity Jags, Jaggy Jags. Get the hits, get the taps. Uh oh, double up here. Oh, oh, oh. That's all right, we'll take that. Oh, oi, 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 oi. I was just about to say, it's gone quiet. Boom. Little tap, tap. My pocket. Jinx's pocket. All right, folks. We are, I forget what day it is now. We've got three days left. We've come out for a dusky. Um, Beach has been pretty quiet, not many people along here at the moment, which is good. Plenty of holes available. Um, Justin and I have only got a few small mullies, tiny, a few salmon. Gareth the legend got onto another metre 20 today. He caught a metre 52, his biggest fish yet, just the other day. Um, he's got some footage of it, so hopefully if I can get that off him, I'll put it here in the video somewhere below now. That's a nice one. Is it side hooked? Oh, that's a metery. Big one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well done. Here it is. That's some other load, that one. Oh, that's 150. Get fucked. No way, that's a 150. Whoa. Very nice fish. It's there all the way up. Wow, 145. One. What's that? 145. Yep. PB. Yes. What have I? Take, what take a photo. Oh. Yeah. Wait. Wow. You ever got flies? Yep. Can you get them, please? How many hours of fishing you done to get this one? 100 hours. 100 two. hours just to get this one. Two, two in five minutes. Two in five minutes. Yeah, that's another mully. Another one. Oh, that's a big one too. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm coming for. Beautiful 
weather. Northerly. Waves are flat. Woo! Quite a bit like a barramundi, this one. Yeah, I look like it. Oh, shit. It's beautiful today. Yep, we let the last one go, he's a big one. This one go too. Let oh. this one. Um, I reckon it's pregnant. Wait. Yeah, that's big, it's full of eggs. She's going back, not risking it. <sighs> oh, he's taken over from me. Oh, there's my shark. Oh, got plenty of power, eh? What sort of shark is that? Bronzy. Six foot bronzy. Beauty. I couldn't do the last bit. Fucking knackered. Where is he? There he is. Oh, it's good size. Where'd he go? Tough, isn't it? I must have been bigger than that, eh? Yeah. But he, he didn't get too much content because he was on his own trying to land it, release it. Um, I think he said all he was able to get was some video of it on the ground. So. Um, we're going to piece together a lot of content. Washo's got a GoPro. 
we've got a GoPro. The legend's got some stuff on his phone, so I'm going to mash it all together and hopefully share it with you throughout different periods of this EP. Um, we've got about three days to go. We're not on the board yet with any big ones ourselves, Jags and Chris and Fosso, uh, but doesn't stop us from fishing hard over the next three days. So come down just here for a dusky. It's about quarter to eight. So we'll fish here till on dark, just after dark. The hole's quite good as you can see. Plenty of water in here and conditions are pretty much just about perfect how I like it. Southeast, south, more southerly, but a little bit of easterly in there and good water. Washy, churny, lots of movement happening in there. So. We're at the bottom of the tides now, so there's pretty much about 20 centimetres of movement between the high and low tides, so very little tidal movement at the moment. But one of the things here, don't be shy or scared to fish shallow waters. Anyway, let's see if we can hopefully get on, and get some footage of a dusky hookup. Here we go. Yo. Well, folks, that wraps up part one of this 2022 Far West Coast epic Yalatar fishing adventures. But if you've liked what you've seen, sit tight. Next week, we'll be releasing part two with some more epic, huge fishing bust-ups and all the good stuff and adventures that you've seen in this EP. We'll see you next week, folks.